vibe coding is terrible and not for the reason you think. So what are my feelings about vibe coding? Why is it bad? And what can you do to continue to improve as a developer, even though AI and different tools that are getting better? There's a saying, anything that can be automated will be. What vibe coding has showed to me and different tools like Bolt.dev, V0, and Canva just released an amazing tool. What that is actually doing is allowing folks that may not be as technical or not technical at all to build and bring their ideas to life. So now the competition is not just the developer, but it's also those tools. So if you're doing things that can be automated with those tools, you're going to quickly realize that your value is going to decrease as a programmer, someone who physically types in the code. I think the value of what a developer will be shifting. And if you're not noticing the shift and not working to pivot your skill set, you are going to be left behind. One thing that I see in the software engineering world is that a lot of folks are actually software engineers are building those tools, either for other engineers or for non-coder or low code solutions. And basically just like Squarespace and Wix came out to allow non-technical people quickly build websites, these AI tools will be the extension of that. So if you're only focusing on building simple business websites, which there's still a lot of value in that, but unfortunately that's not going to be the value for the big companies where you wanna get hired as a software engineer. So two things to consider. If you're becoming a developer to work for another company and not building simple business websites or apps that will easily be automated by these AI tools, you're actually going to have to develop a skill that will allow you to build more complex applications like the tools that the software engineer is developing like V0 or working on bold.dev or whatever the website is, but those tools. And if you cannot build a complex system like that, I feel like it's gonna be very hard to have a job because the barrier to entry of things that could be built is rising. And so before you freak out, let me just share this with you. If you're wondering if you should learn to code, the answer for me is still yes, because no matter at what level of developer you are, these tools are going to allow you to either build your own software, as a product or work for other businesses that actually don't want to build that stuff themselves, not even write a prompt for the app is going to build. You're going to be the orchestrator. You're going to be the one that builds it for them. So there's still going to be place for you. If you're looking to get a job at a software company, I think what you need to really understand is understand what are they building and what skills that you need to do before building a simple website with React or a simple React Native app for mobile was hard. But now with these tools, the barrier to entry is so low that a lot of non-technical people could build those things. So I went to a entrepreneur con, uh, like meetup and people there, are some of them were developers, are they the best developers? Not really, but they're building projects or services for other people using these low code solutions or these different tools. And the secret why they're able to be successful, A, because they're entrepreneur, they're taking a chance, and granted, not all of them are going to be successful. But now as a developer, you're not just competing against other developers, you're competing against other entrepreneurs that want to build things and before they weren't able to, and now with these tools that they can. They could also hire senior developer with the help of their tools could build things much faster or a mid-level developer or a junior developer in a country that may have lower wages and just have them iterate on the product and build it. So competition is not just from AI tools, not just from folks living in countries where the labor is cheaper. And so I believe that the general coding portion of literally typing the code is going to be commoditized. And the fact that that's not going to be the main value that you provide as a developer. And I still said, don't freak out. And I just told you a bunch of stuff to freak out. The point that I want to say here, if you know this now and you know which way the world is shifting, you could start working on things that will prepare you for the future. 
And so for me, I am part entrepreneur and I work as a software engineer where now I work as a developer advocate. To me, I'm really excited about this AI future because I know me as a solopreneur, I could get a lot more done faster without being a super senior engineer. And from that perspective, this will empower me to try many ideas and build different products and see if I could bring them to market. As a software engineer, I also realized that the barrier to entry to what a junior engineer was five years ago to where it is now, the bar has risen really, really high. And so you do need to focus on things that will allow you to get better or at least have a skill that's still required by companies. So just the fact that you know how to code, unless you have very specific domain knowledge that I'll talk about in a little bit, or a different skill that's in demand, for instance, understanding the DevOps process and being able to deploy your services, let's say on Amazon or other cloud services, just the fact that you know how to code may not be enough. So before I'll tell you how you could kind of prep yourself and what I'm thinking about doing, let me just tell you about my friend. And my friend, he knows a little bit of Python, but he makes almost $400,000. And you're like, holy Jesus, how is he making money with just knowing Python and why is it so much? It's not the fact that he knows how to code in Python. It's the fact that he's a PhD mathematician who's solving really complex problems. And Python is just one way for him to be able to take the methods in his domain that he knows and make him usable in different automated scripts that he's doing that may help him make the big bucks. So it's not so much the coding but it's more the domain knowledge of him being mathematician. So I think moving forward is we have to identify that coding is going to be not the most difficult part to do, but it's understanding a specific domain. I'll give you an example. For instance, I was in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I understand how the whole business works. And because of that domain knowledge, and my ability to code, I could actually build really useful application for that specific market. It's not so much the coding of the application, but it's understanding the model of how those Brazilian Jiu Jitsu schools work, what software they need to manage their students, maybe send lessons, maybe take payments. I understand how that works. And so by combining my domain and my coding, I'm able to create useful applications. Maybe that's not something you're interested. You just want to be a developer. So for me, here's the things that I would bet on. Number one, continue to dive into understanding code deeper. So you always focus on not being surface level developer, but you pick one area that you want to be the best at. With that being said, get used to using all the AI tools there are out there because moving quickly, especially if you try to bring a new product to the market, that's the name of the game. The people that win are not the people that make the best product. It's the people that make their product fast and bring it to market. That's why there's so many products that hit the market initially and they might be a buggy mess, but over time the bugs get worked out, the product gets improved, but the fact because they were first and the demand was there, they won. And so these AI tools allow folks to move quicker. So embrace the AI tools, learn all the tools like cursor or other favorite tools that you have, know their limitations, learn how you could use them appropriately and let them do the stuff that is monotonous or you don't like doing. So you could spend more time thinking about the more important things. So outside of diving deep on a different programming language that you want to specialize in, learn all these different tools that are available. Outside of the AI tools, the next thing I would focus on is actually focus on working with databases. Because of AI and all the things and all the different tools that are being created, being able to be an expert at database management and making sense of the data or being able to organize it in a way that makes sense, I think is going to be an important skill. So it's not so much just creating the UI design, but it's knowing that I have this much data in my application how could I use it or filter it in a way that makes sense and brings value to our customers? Another thing that I would focus on is being able to not so much just programming and building your app, but thinking about the DevOps aspect of it, deploying those systems to Amazon, AWS, or other cloud solutions. And now what's becoming really 
uh, valuable is not only being able to deploy your actual web application or your product, but is actually being to deploy different AI systems and services like the GPUs for training or whatever on the cloud. A lot of companies will find value in that. So that's another place you could pursue. And finally, the last thing outside of you know, diving deep into a niche of your programming language that you choose, so you become the best of it using AI tools and then thinking about DevOps, is start to think of what area of business that you find really exciting. What domain knowledge can you learn that combined with your programming is going to be, make you more valuable? And that will allow you to focus on things that AI can't do well yet. So if you've been kind of thinking like, man, AI, whatever, it's going to blow over, it's not getting blown over. And it is going to be a fact of life. And what it means to be a developer is shifting. And if you're not willing to make that shift, you are going to be lost behind. And just uh, to kind of reiterate, if you're working to be a developer, what am I doing? And is it right? I don't know, but this is what I'm doing. Number one, I am focusing on these three languages. I'm focusing on TypeScript, JavaScript, Node for all the front end stuff. This is a language I'm already familiar with. React is my framework of choice. If I want to build a native app, I use React Native. That's really the only place I'm going to stay. I'm not going to focus on learning other things because it's not important for me. Number two is I'm learning Python so I could better understand all the different services and API or AI specific tools that are available that have more libraries with Python. So I want to make sure that I understand how to use uh, Python to create an API that consumes some of these different services or to allow me to do more advanced things, even like train my own model if that's the area I want to get to. Outside of learning Python, I'm continuing to improve my knowledge in SQL because I want to be able to understand how to work with a lot of data and how to make sense, how to migrate it, how to write performant queries. Some people say you could ask the AI, but the point what I'm saying is the data and manipulating that data is going to be, and it's already a very important skill. There's a lot of people that have just jobs as being database managers. The last thing I want to focus is on understanding how cloud services work, how to deploy not just websites, but different AI agents, AI models, how to deploy uh, and use cloud services that use GPUs to do something useful in your product. And for that, as my last language that I'm going to focus on learning is going to be Go because there's a lot of uh, DevOps stuff that Go is used for. And so for me, it's TypeScript, Python, Go, focusing on better able to work with databases. And then the final stretch is understanding how to deploy AI solutions on the cloud. And I think that's going to kind of guide me in the direction that I want to go to continue to have a career in this field. But you could let me know in the comments what you think. And if you're still kind of sad, like, man, AI is going to take my jobs. This is going to happen. I think vibe coding is actually a good thing, even though it widens the competition that exists. Because with vibe coding, you could literally start building something that you don't even know how to build. And here's how I would do it. Build the thing with vibe coding. Get as far as you can. When you get something that works, Ask AI lots of questions about what does this line of code do if you don't know? Can I do this better? Why the recommendation you gave me is better? And then finally, what I like to do as the third step is copy all the code and say, please point me to all the resources that I need to understand in order to understand this code. And what I'll do, it'll give you a lot of free resources for online courses. And I literally ask, please teach me about the computer science concepts that will help me understand this code. So if you feel frustrated that AI is going to take a job, on the other side of the coin is AI could allow you to be a super learner and focus on learning things quickly. So while we're still at the beginning of this AI craze, and it's not going to die down, I used to be the believer that AI is going to die down and <laughs> we're all going to be OK. But the truth is, it's not. Like I just seen so many different companies and what they're doing and the direction they're taking, especially founders. To say that we're going to go backwards somehow is complete nonsense. And I'll talk more about this in other videos. But just understand, AI is here to stay. Learn to use it as a tool. But more importantly, 
learn it to be your teacher to teach you all the hard things all the advanced things that you want to explore as a developer in the niche that you're doing i know i just rambled for 16 or so minutes but i really want to make these videos where i just like honestly talk to you about what i'm thinking what i'm doing so you kind of get an idea of my thought process and what's going through my mind because at the end of the day what I want you to take out of this video is that learning to code is still a good thing to do, but just understand that it's changing, pay attention to that change, and try to figure out what new skills you need to learn in order to stay relevant. But with that being said, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.